to the second talk, if you allow me. Okay, so uh, my second task was to talk about AFib ablation local experience. So um, I tried to change the topic, but Samah was very persistent. She wanted me to talk about this, so I said, okay, sure. <clears throat> so this is my personal experience. Uh, I don't do cryo. Uh, all my AFib ablations are radio frequency, uh, since I'm biased. So this is the outline of the talk. So Oman is relatively a small country. The population of Oman is around uh, 4.6 million. Um, we have around 9,000 doctors in Oman. Um, we are four adult cardiac electrophysiologists and one pediatric elect uh, cardiac electrophysiologist. Who does uh, adult as well? So we have a lot of business. This was uh, shown uh, by Samah, just basically showing that AFib is in the rice whether it's in the world or in the region. Uh, this was uh, touched upon as well, Gul Gulf Safe uh, Registry, and you can see, I'm pretty sure if we repeat this uh, registry, uh, the numbers will be at least double. Um, okay, so how do we select our patients, or patients, how we select them for AFib ablation? This is at least how um, I work. So the first thing before booking any patient for AFib ablation, we we'll try to modify um, AFib risk factors. I know some centers in the state will not offer AFib ablation if they are you know, obese and they continue smoking and drink alcohol. Um, unfortunately, we don't have dedicated uh, AFib clinics. This is in the work. Probably it will uh, come to light sometime this year, um, which is basically nurse-led clinic. Uh, but we, we kind of, we, we do it ourselves. So um, invariably, patients with atrial fibrillation, we refer them for, uh, for sleep uh, study. Uh, the good thing, my clinic is opposite to, to the sleep uh, medicine physician, so basically he has a lot of customers from me. Uh, we encourage weight loss, uh, and we do send them to the dietitian, and we refer them back to the family physician to control their diabetes and hypertension. We do have a smoking uh, cessation clinic that we refer uh, if the patient is smoker. So we try to maximize um, control of AFib risk factors as much as we can uh, before attempting AFib ablation. Who are the patients that we um, uh, take to the lab? So straight from the guidelines. Patients who, ha who are symptomatic, whether they are on antiarrhythmic or not, whether they failed antiarrhythmic or not, uh, definitely patients who have tachycardia-induced cardiomyopathy. Sometimes if these patients are very sick, we cardivert them uh, and start amiodarone for two months and see if the rejection fraction improved. Uh, many of our patients, they don't uh, convert, and in, in that case, we just take them to the lab if they agreed. A new onset AFib, if it's less than one year, um, young patients, uh, and inadequate rate control by AB blocking agent. This is probably more towards the EP um, area, uh, pre-procedural TEE. Uh, this is basically my practice. It's not necessarily the practice of my colleagues, but every patient who undergoes uh, affibrillation has a TEE done before, usually done in the lab, I do all my cases under GA, uh, and we do the TEE before. I know there are many downsides to it. If, if you have a clot, you cancel, but usually most of our patients are anticoagulated at least two months before the, the procedure. Um, having said that, we have occasionally uh, clot, and we, we basically um, terminate the, uh, the, the procedure. So it's regardless of their anticoagulation status and if they presented an AFib or sinus. Everybody gets a TEE. Um, this was not the case uh, where I practice. I practice in Canada and the States. Um, in Canada, everybody gets a TEE, and this was basically a study that I did. Probably Samah knows this. And the incidence of patients who underwent TEE before AFib ablation in the center was around 11%. It's more than what is reported in the literature. The literature reports anywhere between 1% to 7%, um, and we discussed the reasons why. Maybe this, the patients were sicker and 
a big percentage of patients had, uh, they, they were on warfarin for one reason or the other, and the TTR was less than what you'd expect. Surprisingly, even Chad's VASC zero had, uh, pa some patients had clots. So everybody who comes to the lab gets a TE. Uh, in the States, patients who are anticoagulated and they present in sinus rhythm, they, we don't do a TE. Having said that, uh, it was a heavily, it's center which uses ice. So basically we'll take the ice all the way to the pulmonary artery and look into the appendage if there are any clots. Uh, so we kind of did uh, LA screening, uh, but with another method. Um, AFib ablation procedure, this is technical, so sorry for those who are uh, not electrophysiologists, I will be very quick here. We know that the triggers are from the pulmonary veins, and this was basically demonstrated by Hessiger. Uh, from 45 patients, we basically um, demonstrated that these foci, around 70 foci in these patients of AFib were triggered from these veins. So the standard procedure now is basically to isolate the veins. There are many ways of doing it. The way we kind of do is basically wide enteral excision uh, or ablation of the veins. This is uh, how I do it, or so this is how I was trained. We do it under GA, jet ventilation if it's available. We always use a flexible sheet. We, if the patient is an AFib, we usually cardivert. If the patient is, we cannot cardivert for one reason or the other, um, we, uh, we ventricular pace. Um, we always use ice. It helps us in transeptal as well as uh, establishing you know, contact. Um, and basically, I'll show you a case at the end. Um, and yeah, that's basically it. One word about uh, jet ventilation, it's basically high frequency, low, ti uh, low tidal volume, and from PEN uh, study, which I'll show you, there's 25% reduction of recurrence of AFib in one year. So this was the study uh, from, from, from PEN. Uh, 300 patients who underwent AFib ablation uh, were assessed for outcome, basically recurrence. Group one had CT and 3D mapping. Group two had um, 3D mapping uh, and steerable sheet, and group three had um, s um, basically 3D mapping, steerable sheet, and jet ventilation. And you can see the success rate in one year, or the you know, AFib-free survival in one year was 52%, uh, 66%, and 74% for those who um, used uh, 3D mapping, obviously, steerable sheet, and jet ventilation. Okay, so this is basically a quick, uh, you can clearly see the catheter doesn't move. Uh, on, you can see the diaphragm moves very quickly. The catheter does, uh, obviously doesn't move with jet ventilation. You can clearly see uh, diaphragm moves, but the catheter is very stable, uh, and you hardly see, and it, it makes a huge difference. Um, in a second, you will see conventional uh, ventilation. Okay, you can clearly see the catheter is moving on fluoro. Okay, it moves in 3D mapping um, and basically moves as well on ice. So it, it makes a huge difference. Okay, so local experience. Um, I perform all my ablation at the National Heart Center. Um, this was a small retrospective study. We are basically continuing it uh, from 2016 to 2019. Um, for all the AFib cases that were done in the center, 60% um, or 70% were men, and the mean age was around 40. Uh, mean age for female, around 50. Uh, most of them had proximal AFib, around 60% and most of them, around 50%, had AFib for one to five years. So uh, I guess once we, we, we redo this, uh, I think it changed. we're more aggressive now in taking these patients to the lab. Um, they had risk factors, uh, hypertension in 30 patients, and you know, diabetes, heart failure, and so forth, but they had low CHAT score. Uh, cryoablation in almost 60% of patients, radiofrequency ablation in uh, 40. This is definitely changed. Um, um, most patients underwent their first procedure, but you know, around 13 patients had redo. I think the most important uh, 
uh, piece of information is the rejection fraction. Those who had low ejection fraction, uh, the pre-EF uh, ablation uh, EF was 32% and post-ablation was around 43%. So ablation works. Um, uh, just not to waste your time, this is a quick video of the, you know, how, how we do this EF ablation. It was done by uh, my technologist, so maybe there are a few uh, glitches or mistakes. So this is a patient I did last month. Um, a young lady with uh, presumed tachycardia induced cardiomyopathy. We failed, we cardioverted her, but she didn't uh, convert. Um, anyway, so we took her to the lab. Uh, I always use ice, uh, which is very useful in these procedures. I always check uh, pulmonary uh, velocity as well as diameter uh, uh, before the procedure and after. Okay, I use Pentary or HD grid. This is the map. We do the standard procedure, circumferential ablation of both veins. Um, and if the patient has flutter, we do CTI line or we try to induce the flutter. Um, invariably, uh, more than 95% of the cases with this flow, uh, we, we, we achieve uh, fast, uh, any first uh, bypass isolation with just one ablation. And we check the velocity after, just to make sure we didn't cause any pulmonary vein stenosis. Thank you.